This lesson is part of my video course that teaches how to build event-driven Spring Boot microservices with Apache Kafka. For other lessons in this playlist, please check description of this lesson. Most of the time when two applications need to communicate with each other, this communication is usually in the form of request and response. If these two applications are microservices, then usually one microservice will send HTTP request to another microservice and then it will receive HTTP response. This type of communication is applicable in many use cases, but not all. What if we have a microservice that needs to communicate a message to multiple other microservices at the same time? The direct request and response communication is no longer convenient in this case. If there are only two microservices, then maybe we can deal with it. But what if there are dozens of destination microservices that need to receive this message? Or what if microservices that need to receive this message can be added later? How many of them will be added later? We do not know. In this kind of use cases, for example, the direct HTTP request and response communication between microservices is no longer helpful. And this is when Apache Kafka and event-driven architecture will be very helpful to us. Microservice that needs to communicate a message to multiple other microservices will publish a message to Apache Kafka topic. Microservices that are interested in receiving this message will receive it from Apache Kafka topic as soon as this message becomes available there. This model is often called producer and consumer, where microservice that is on the left side is a producer and microservices on the right side are consumers. And you might also hear that this model is called publisher and subscriber, where products microservice that is on the left side is a publisher and microservices on the right side are subscribers that are subscribed to receive this message. As soon as publisher publishes message, all subscribed microservices will receive this message and will be able to process it. This is very scalable and very extensible architecture. Microservices are loosely coupled and they are completely location transparent to each other. You can plug in as many receiving microservices as needed. They just need to know what type of message to expect. Now, let's assume that product's microservice received a request to do something. Like, for example, create a new product. When a product's microservice is done processing this request and a new product is created, it will publish an event. Like, for example, product created event. And then all microservices that are interested in receiving notification about this event will receive this event and will be able to act on it. Because in this architecture, microservices communicate with each other by means of publishing and consuming messages or events, it is called event-driven architecture. Now, as you can see, event-driven architecture is very powerful, but you need to apply it wisely. In those cases, when simple request-response communication is needed, you do not want to overcomplicate your system with event-driven architecture. So you need to learn when to use simple request-response communication and when to use event-driven communication between microservices. Another important point to mention about event-driven architecture is that in most cases it is asynchronous and that it is loosely coupled. For example, when publisher microservice publishes event to a topic, it responds back to a calling application right away. It does not wait until every single subscribing microservice received and successfully processed this event. The publisher microservice is not aware how many subscribing microservices are there and it does not know how many of them have successfully handled the event. Microservices that consume event do not send back a direct response to a publisher microservice. If one of the subscriber microservices is down, the publisher microservice will not know about it. But when subscriber microservice comes back and resumes working, it will still be able to consume published event. And this is another advantage of this architecture over a direct request and response communication. In the case of direct request and response communication, if destination microservice is down, then most likely it will miss the message and will no longer receive it. In the event-driven architecture with Apache Kafka, if one of the subscribed microservices was down, it will still be able to consume events that it missed 
when it comes back online and resumes working. All right, so this was a high level overview only of event driven microservices. In the following lessons, you will learn a lot more about Apache Kafka and how it can be used to build event driven Spring Boot microservices.